So I was doing some preparation for an upcoming video and I realized I was a little low on my chair cloth. So I thought I'd make some new chair cloth and if you're interested, you can watch and see how I make it. Stay tuned. So I do have another video on my channel where I make chair cloth while I'm out in the woods one day during the winter. And I'll put a link to that video right up here if you're interested in seeing that. But today I'm going to be making chair cloth on bulk. So a little bit larger can of uh, that I'll be using to put the materials in that I'm going to make into chair cloth. But I also wanted to show you what I use when I normally go out with my flint and steel kit. So this is the tin that I use for well, it's part of my flint and steel kit when I kit when I carry it out in the woods. It's just an old uh, little cream tin that we had at home. You can see it's been in the fire a number of times. I do have a little piece of duct tape over it because underneath there's, there's a small hole, a vent hole that uh, is good to have. Or actually, I think probably you'll find it's necessary to have some means of air escaping from whatever tin you're going to use. This is a nice small tin. I did want to show you what I have in here because. Um, I like char cloth and it's a great, for, well I'm going to need it for the video that I'll be making, but uh, char cloth is not my preferred charred material when I'm making flint and steel fires. Um, I actually prefer, or solar fires for that matter, I actually prefer charred punk wood. So that's what's in this tin, is a whole lot of charred punk wood. And uh, that other video I mentioned has the shows making the charred punk wood and how effective it is. But that's what I carry primarily. I do carry char cloth with me, but that I usually have sealed up in a small plastic bag as well. It goes along with this tin. But what I'm going to be using today is a larger cookie tin. <laughs> and this one has been in the fire a few times. In fact, this is what I used in that other video I mentioned. And you can see it does have a vent hole in it as well. I just pulled some uh, duct tape off of that that I normally keep over that when it's uh, not in use. So I'm going to set this up and show you what I have and what I'll be charring today. Okay, so what do you need to get started with charring materials for use? Either with uh, flint and steel, or quite often I use quartz and steel because we don't have flint available to us in Nova Scotia. Uh, or for solar fires, or uh, it helps with fric friction fires. It's actually a nice coal extender for friction fires as well. Or with a, a fire piston, which I have another video where I use a fire piston as well. Well, you need some type of a tin. Uh, there are other methods. We'll show it in a future video where you can get away without using the tin and still make charred material but you need something to char to put inside of your tin. So it can be anything organic. It has to be 100% organic. There can be no artificials, no polyesters, nylons, or anything else in it. As long as it's 100% organic, you can char it. So what I have inside of here today, though, it's a little bit of an assortment because I have some experiments I want to try. So I'll just dig a few of the samples out. And you can see I have the tin fairly full. Uh, normally you wouldn't fill it up. There's some air gaps in this, but uh, you don't want it completely full. You don't want it compressed because it's going to take a while for this to heat up and cook off all the volatile gases leaving charred material behind. So, for example, what I'm using today is this is an old pair of 100% cotton sweatpants that had been worn out and I decided to keep a piece of it, one of the legs, and turn it into charred material. So it's a little bit fleecy on one side, regular material on the other side. Uh, makes a good char cloth. Underneath that, let's dig a couple pieces out. Now this I use, I like using. This is a square of uh, placemat, like a dinner placemat you'd put on your table underneath your plates. 100% cotton. Now the reason I like this is it's especially thick. It's almost as thick as lamp wick. And it uh, holds an ember for a long period of time. So you can get a big glowing ember from a small piece of this. So it's a nice char cloth to use for that. You actually you don't need a piece quite this big, but uh, you can break it up after it's charred a lot easier. So I have that in there. Down at the bottom, I'll have to take some of this out I guess. I have a piece of um, hemp rope. So this is a piece of hemp rope that uh, I wanted to try charring to see how that worked. I've, I have done it before, but I've, I've got quite a length of it, you can see here. And uh, so I'm going to char that up today. And this is something I have not done before, so I have no idea how it's going to turn out. These are makeup pads, 100% cotton makeup pads. So I thought I'd char a few of those. I don't know if they will hold up after they're uh, charred, but uh, we'll see. That's what we'll try out at the end of this. So I'll put that stuff back inside. And it all mixed in, spread it out so it's not too compact. 
Now I have used denim, so if you have a pair of denim jeans, as long as they're 100% cotton or linen or other organic materials, you can use them. But uh, I've used t-shirt and jeans work well. T-shirts don't seem to work all that well. It gets to be too thin after the fact. Canvas, if it's 100% cotton material or linen, can also work as well. So there's my tin. Now, here's my stove. The stove today is my Tom Shoe Titanium Emberlit clone, and I have it loaded for a top-down burn with some split hardwood, a little homemade fire starter that I'm going to start the fire with. And it's going to take a few minutes to get this fire started. I'll show myself making the or getting the fire started. But once the fire is established, then I'm going to put the tin on top, and we'll we'll watch it turn and the smoke start to come out, and we'll uh, see the progress from there. All right, so I have, as I said, my Tom Shoe Titanium loaded for a top-down burn. Uh, you know, I, I really like using a top-down burn. Now, this is loaded quite full. Hopefully, it's not too full. I like loading using a top-down burn because uh, it, the fuel lasts the longest this way because it's burning from the top down. Uh, it does the, the, the fire does get about halfway down, I find, and work its uh, way up from there, as you know. So the nice thing about it, I guess, is the airflow through the vertically stacked sticks. So it works pretty good. Now, as I said, I have a homemade fire starter here, which is one of those makeup pads soaked in cotton, folded over with another little piece on the inside of it. Got to get it started first. I'm going to put that down inside. Give that a couple of seconds for the pad itself to start burning. And uh, I have some wood chips here that I'm going to be putting on top because in order to get a top-down burn really started, uh, sometimes the fire lighter or the, the fire starter itself will work, but quite often you have to build almost like a miniature fire on top. You need to get some coals generated, which will work their way down into the wood. So as that starts, some wood chips here that I can, without putting my fire out, that is. These wood chips are just from carving projects. Don't throw anything away, I guess. If it looks like it's going to be useful later. All right, so. I'm going to keep this, well, keep building this fire, and uh, it'll take a few minutes for it to establish itself, and then I'll bring it back when I go to put the the uh, charge in on. Okay, as you can see, the uh, fire is well established in the Tom Shoe Titanium wood stove right now. It took a few minutes. The I can see the coals burning down nicely inside, so this is going to go for quite a while. And you do need a fire that's going to go for a little while, and if you don't want to do a whole lot of maintenance of feeding sticks in, then a top-down burn is great for that. So once again, here is my char tin. You can see the hole in the center on the top. You can see where it's been used before. It's like a creosote material that's built up on the inside of the can. My materials, no. One of the tricks I have learned to creating char cloth is a hot fire. Uh, I have done it over gas stoves. Uh, you know what? It doesn't work as well. It seems to take longer over a gas stove and you use a lot of gas. And I still end up with uh, some uncharred materials. This is going to be, make a much better result, so let's put that on top. So what I'm doing essentially when you, when you make char cloth is you're cooking off volatile gases. So very quickly the material inside is going to heat up in there and you're going to start to see smoke coming out of the hole on top. If I haven't got it overloaded then the smoke should be coming out fairly quickly. And you want that smoke to continue to come out because as long as there is smoke coming out, then those are the volatile gases being cooked off out of the organic materials. It does take a few minutes to start, but once it starts, you should see a steady stream of smoke. Now, if I were to do this in a larger fire, like a fire pit or an open fire, quite often those gases, because they're volatile and they will combust, will send out like a shoot of flame. Now, that's not a bad thing. Don't worry about that. As long as the hole is small, it doesn't mean all your materials inside are being consumed because the only area where that volatile gas is receiving oxygen, which is what it needs to burn, is where it exits out through the hole. 
so uh, that's quite okay however when you are finished and you go to take this off of like there's no more smoke coming out of your out of your can uh, you go to take it off one be careful because it is hot uh, you want to plug or put a something either like a stick a pointed stick take a little stick point it put it inside so that oxygen isn't entering into the can where the material inside can continue to burn so uh, we'll let that go I think I start to see some smoke coming out now a little slow I may have put a bit too much in the can uh, that's a bit of a learning experience we'll see oh, it's starting to come out pretty good now it'll come out quite a steady heavy stream I don't know if you can see that coming out yet because there is obviously smoke from the fire itself and hopefully you can see the jet of smoke starting to come out of the hole now we'll see if I can focus in a little closer I am gonna to have to put a bit of a windscreen around the stove to because there is a slight breeze here in my backyard and uh, I just want to concentrate all the heat I can onto the bottom of the stove it's working pretty good now you should be able to see the smoke coming out of the hole now now this is going to take a bit of time, so I'm not going to let the video run through till it's finished, but I will bring it back when we're ready to take it off of the stove. Okay, as you can see, there's no more smoke coming out of the, of the uh, vent hole. Um, I will tell you as it was cooking that I had flame coming around from the lid, so there was smoke escaping from around from the lid. I did have a little bit of flame coming out of the vent hole, but it has, all the smoke has stopped. And you should wait until all the smoke has stopped coming out, because as long as there's smoke, that means there's still some moisture, still some volatiles in there. Now, this is where the temptation to open it up right away to see how it turned out comes, but uh, resist that temptation because if you do, that stuff inside is still hot, hot to the point of ignition, and as soon as oxygen gets at it, it'll start to just smolder and burn like a piece of char cloth would. So I'm going to put a little pointed stick in to res keep as much oxygen out as I can. I have a pair of tongs here. You could do this with leather gloves, but I, this will be hot. I'm just going to set it aside and when it's cold enough for me to touch then it's time for me to open it so I'll bring it back when it's time to open it up and we'll check and see how the chair cloth turned out okay the can is now cool enough to touch a little warm underneath but not combustion warm if you can touch it it's not too warm oh yeah be aware if you're going to be doing this you are going to get sooty hands there's really no way around that I do have a damp cloth next to me here so that I make sure I don't get the rest of my clothes dirty but it will be sooty so let's take the lid off and see what we have it's not stuck I'm just trying to work it away around a little bit a little bit hot at the bottom all right okay there's what it turned out like now this is my first look at it uh, I'm happy with what I see I will show you a few things that uh, to watch out for so this is a good looking piece of chair cloth completely black not fragile in the sense that it's going to fall apart and just turn to ash so that's good uh, however here's a piece see if I can bring that up a little closer you're going to see it's still a little brown. That's not completely charred. Doesn't mean it's no good. It's just not completely charred. A few pieces like that I'm okay with. If there had been a lot of material that was still brown like that, it would need to go back on the fire and cook a little longer. Let's work our way down. You know, I sent, said hemp rope, but in fact it wasn't hemp. It was jute twine, a heavyweight jute twine that I have here. So what I want to do, oh yeah, there is the makeup pad. Eh, you know what that might be useful I haven't tried this before so I'm gonna to have to try that out and see if that works uh, I don't know if it's a sustainable thing but it was interesting to try to see how it would work out so there's a piece of the jute twine nicely charred there's what it looked like before so you can see it's lost about uh, half its diameter and of course it's much lighter here is a piece of the Let's see if I can find a better one here it's all pretty small now. There's a piece of that green placemat, table placemat. Was green, I should say. There's what it looked like before. There's what it looks like after. Again, it lost about half of its size. Uh, where's a piece of the... Here's a piece of the sweatpant material. Here's what it looked like before. Here's what it looks like afterwards. 
okay yeah that looks like pretty good charcoal i'm happy with how that turned out so the proof though is in how does it work yeah there's a there's that brown piece again you can see and it's not yeah it's not a great piece of charcoal but this part of it is so sometimes that happens Again, the proof is, how does it work? So I'm going to set up, I do have a little bit of frayed up jute twine that I have into a miniature bird's nest here. I don't have any natural materials, so I had to just fray up a bit of jute twine. And we'll try it with a piece of flint and steel, see how it works out. Okay, for the, this demonstration, I'm going to use a piece of that uh, sweat pant material. So you can see, nice and black, still flexible, it's not falling apart. That's a good indication. Some people like to rip it open and expose some fibers. That, yeah, that'll work. That's what I'm hoping the, the jersey side of the material will work as well. It gives more surface area to catch sparks off of the flint. So where's my piece of flint? So the flint I'm using is something that was given to me because we don't have it locally here. This is not good quality flint. It's referred to as chert. You can see it's not a great flint. Uh, trick here and again this is not a session on how do you do flint and steel just how to make the chair cloth but I'm looking for a sharp edge that looks like it'll work pretty good I think from that direction I'm going to lay the chair cloth on top and I'm going to be striking downwards onto that sharper edge not really sharp but should still work with the hopes of peeling off a little bit of metal, which will reflect upwards and get caught in the chair cloth. So I'm using the flint striker made for me by Peter LePay, and I do have a video on that on my channel. Let's see if I can't make this work. I'll step back. Sparks probably won't show up well in the daytime here. There we go. I think you can see that. Very simple. Not the. I could have spent more time on this, making this little bird's nest. But we'll open it up a little bit, get the chair cloth into the center of it, wrap it around a little bit, and I'll step back and see what we can do. Give it a second for it to, actually it may even ignite on its own here. Give it a second for the heat to build up inside of that little pocket that I created. And we have flame. And I have a thing here to catch it in. Okay. That's how you make chair cloth, and that's how it works with a piece of flint and steel. Let's quickly wrap this video up. Okay, one more thing before I wrap this video up. It occurred to me right after I turned the camera off. You probably want to know how that uh, makeup pad worked out, so let's give it a try. Again, I haven't tried this before, so this will be new to me and to you at the same time. Uh, it is a little fragile, so see if we can't use that same spot on the stone again. Just setting it up on the stone here. I don't have a bird's nest, but I should be able to show you this glowing if it does catch the spark. I don't like anything using anything too fragile because it, uh, well, one, it burns through very quickly, and I'm not, you know, you want your chair material to last a little bit of time. It's falling apart on me. Try it again. I'm getting sparks. Sparks are hitting it, but the just the action, you can see it's just turning to fluff on me. Okay. What can I draw from that? Makeup pads don't work very well for chair cloth, but that's what I wanted to see is to try it out and uh, see if it would work. Now, let's wrap this video up. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on making chair cloth here in my backyard. I would prefer to make it in the woods, but I wanted to make a quantity of it that I could then package into my, my cans and take with me into the woods. And again, I made this for an upcoming video, which you hopefully will see be in not too much time from now. But until next time, if you uh, have any questions or 
comments on making chair cloth or using flint and steel or anything you'd like to see, then please leave them in the comments below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.